God is taking you far, my daughter. Whenever you have disappeared, I can't see you in this crowd. That the Lord is going to use you mightily. Amen. I will say she has taken away my entire message. Mm. I didn't even know who was preaching today. But she has taken away my entire message. And God is saying something to us. Hello, somebody. Amen. Tell your neighbor God is speaking to you. God is speaking to you. And you need to listen. Amen. If you were listening to the message that the woman of God was preaching this morning, it is bordering on familiarity. Tell your neighbor familiarity. Don't be familiar with the things of God. Don't be familiar with the servants of God. Don't be familiar with the calling of God. Hello, somebody. It is talking to us that we have become too familiar. Familiarity neutralizes the blessing that the Lord has put upon your life. Amen. Tell your neighbor familiarity neutralizes the blessing that the Lord has placed upon your life. It neutralizes the prophetic word that God has given you. Amen. Hello, somebody. Many of you sit under the prophetic grace. God blesses every Sunday. God releases Himself through an anointed servant, but your familiarity is neutralizing what God is giving you. God doesn't like familiarity. Starting from the pastors, you come in whenever you feel like. And God, you have told him, I'll be in church by 9 o'clock. You walk in casually because you're too anointed. Hello, somebody. Some of you choose when you are going to come and when you're not going to come today. I think I don't want to go to church. Familiarity. Come into the choir. You do whatever you feel like and you come and feel... I've grown, I'm there. Familiarity is a place where you think you've got it all. And you give excuses. If you heard what she was speaking, she said, instead of telling God, I'm sorry for being familiar, you start to say, ah, Kaidi, no, 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 this is my name, I'm a child, so I'm not a child. Kaidi, I'm a child, I'm a three weeks, I'm a child. Instead of just saying, God, I know Mrs. Miranzi hasn't come. Maybe she's got a problem. Let me pray. And let me take my role as a choir member and just do what God has called me to do. You start giving excuse. You know that you are supposed to usher. You are starting off from home at 11 hours. Who's going to usher people into the church? Familiarity. It's neutralizing your blessings. It's taking away your testimony. It's taking away that which God has already laid upon you. Remember that Saul was chosen by God. Saul was called by God. But he became familiar to the point where he came before God and said, after all, I am the king. After all, I spent I can sacrifice on behalf of the prophet. Familiarity neutralized his ability to be king forever. God said, take him out. Put a man after my own heart. Many of you have no heart after God. I see it in the choir. I see it in the pastors. I see it in the service groups. I see it in the congregation. It's flowing from the head, going down. Familiarity. It's neutralizing the very blessing that God is giving you. You know me, I don't sugarcoat messages. I'm not the one who preached the message. But God spoke through that woman. Took it out of my mouth and 
put his crown in it. So that you know that you know God has called you to do ministry in the church. And you come here and because you think you have been in the church for too long, you decide I can do what I want in any way I want. Hello, somebody. From season to season, I'm on this altar pushing the word of God. I'm on my altar of prayer in the midnight hour, unless otherwise, pushing the word of God. You've never seen me familiar with my God. Hello, somebody. You've never seen me familiar with my God. My work is my work. My children will tell you when it comes to her job, her job is her job. Her calling is her calling. Those that are close to me will tell you when it comes to the things of God, I'm serious. Now that's why God blesses me. Hello, somebody. That's why God lifts me. And I'm saying, God, give me children that are not familiar. I can pray that prayer. Because your familiarity it causes God to just shut the heavens over your life. Tell your neighbor familiarity. Jesus. Some of you God has called you into doing something for him. All you do is just sit in those pews. Get to the kind of change. You come in here with your nice Bibles and your nice looking suits and oh you look beautiful. By the way, you look beautiful when you come to church. <laughs> and you sit in the pews that you just listen to the word and you walk out and you come in next time. You walk out, you're so comfortable with your life because you don't have a problem at the moment. But the day that the problem hits, you'll be the first one for one to one. Mama, pray for me. I've got a problem. I'll ask you, what do you do in the church? Familiarity with God. Familiarity with God. We say join the women. Today is International Women's Day. I don't see anything that the women have done because we've been announcing, we've been saying meet, do something. But the women have become familiar. They're too beautiful, too powdered to stand in front and speak the word of God. Amen. We are too groomed, too beautiful, too oh, we are executives now in the house of God. We are familiar in the things of God. Amen, somebody. If there is somebody who knows how to humble themselves, it's me. Yeah, yesterday I was in a very important meeting. I'll give you a testimony of how God can lift you when you're not familiar with him. I decided to go and be in a meeting where Honorable Minister was and I, I arrived a little bit late because I had a couple of programs that I was running on TV and on radio in the morning. And I decided, I'm late. I'm not going to show off. I'm going, not going to make noise in this meeting. When the usher saw me, they wanted to get my Bible and put it in, put me in front. I said, please, give me the seat at the very back of the auditorium. I'm not looking for recognition. I'm here to meet with my God. I'm here to worship my God. I'm here because God is here. I'm here because I'm here to receive. I'm not here because I'm looking for a place or a, anybody to recognize me. I just want to sit in the back. Amen, somebody. And when they asked, who are the first time visitors? Like many of you are asked, oh, who are the first time visitors? I stood from the back where I was sitting. And the woman of God saw me at the very end of the auditorium. She said, come here. Come here, woman. Why are you sitting back there? I said, please proceed. I'm just here to just hear the word of God. To be refreshed. To also be watered. Amen, Samba. And they had a high delegation of people seated there. This woman, when it comes to women, I cannot even measure up. This woman has connections all over the world. And when you sit and stand before her, you cannot even measure up to her. Well spoken woman just leave 
her entire life abroad. But every year she comes into Zambia, Prophetess Mwaka will be here twice a year. And I will see that be behind a woman of God. She decided in her heart, I had no idea what was going on. And during a break, she just sent people and said, bring the woman of God from the back. Let her come and sit in the high delegation. Where are we all seated? Amongst the ministers and all those that are somebody. I am nobody to sit there. I looked to God. I said, but God, why have you made me sit there? I sat behind. I'm just here to do my duty. I'm never familiar with God. I never carry myself as though I know it all. I never carry myself as though God has done great things in my life. I forget the former things. I forget what I did yesterday. I forget the victory of yesterday. The victory I had an hour ago. I'll forget it. I'll forge ahead. And I'll put my mark on the goal that God has sent me to do. Because if I don't do that, I'll become familiar. Familiarity will close the heavens. Familiarity will neutralize the blessing God was about to give me. Imagine if I'd walked in there and I had accepted the seat of honor that the ashes had given me. That familiarity would have costed me that honor. That familiarity would have cost me that place that God had kept for me in front. I didn't know God had kept a place for me. I didn't know in my life I would sit next to people that are of honor. All I knew was I have come to be refreshed. Many of you, the blessing is neutralized because you're familiar. Because you think you know it all. Because you think you are well connected. You think, ah, in a panipapnena figure in Shidu, it means seven. You see, I knock off awkward hours and so I can go to church and at any time I feel like. Hello, somebody. God is talking to you. God is ministering something. Many of you don't know how to be brothers keepers. You can see something is wrong with your sister. You can't go there because you have become too anointed. Justify to stoop low and touch another. You are too familiar with God. You think you have made it. There are sometimes I'm I'm speaking to my sons and I'm saying, Can you do this, please, in the ministry? And they'll answer as though they are the pastors here. Familiarity. I always say this familiarity will kill you. Tell your neighbor, familiarity will kill you. Be familiar with servants of God, it will kill you. No matter what you think about me, no matter what you put in your heart about me, that familiarity will kill you. It won't kill me. Because I'm right with my God. And I speak as God speaks. I speak and pour out what God wants you to hear. And when God wants to correct you, he says, the word cometh back to correct. It comes to encourage. It comes to build you. It comes to exalt you. It comes also to chastise you. And when God wants to chastise, it is because he has seen that woman and if I can need to beat this child to correct them. Yet lest their familiarity kill them. She read a scripture in Ezekiel that said, God looked for a man whom he could send. And that is you that sits every Sunday in the pews. You have been coming to church for the past 38 years. And you are saying, it's a chikristu, tinachiamba kudar. Mangatu sechian. And you sit every Sunday. And you know God has gifted you in an area you've never served a single day. You come every Sunday. You just feel the pews. You've never bothered to say Nangamu hospitality if not go and do. Okay, ku canceling it. Put go and sheet of church in his ambi. Unangala chape familia. 
Unazi mbea kutunafika Na upendi hila kunyumba Let me tell you the church is not a building The church is your sister Your brother who you have not saved God will not Ask you for building blocks We the pastors Who ask for the building blocks Because we need a shelter God doesn't need a shelter God can minister even in the open air God can minister On a mountain top Jesus ministered wherever he found himself. The church is the person seated next to you, who you must serve. And the people that are putting the seats down for you, the people that come to clean the sanctuary for you, the people that are doing takeoff for you, the people that are putting the services together, they are serving you. What are you doing to serve? Familiarity. It's killing a lot of people. I've stopped of the late calling people to say, My guess this thing is dirty. Where are you? I'll not do that. I told God, when I see dirt, I'm going to clean it myself. I told myself, I think George is a, is, is a witness to this. I come out and I clean the sanctuary myself. I don't care if you don't clean it because you don't feel you are, you are in a position to do God's work. For me, that would be God's work. I will sweep the sanctuary. I will clean the curtains. Women, this was Women's Day. I expected women to scrub. I expected women to clean the house of God. I expected them to take care of the house of God. But look, single-handedly, Today I'm feeding over a hundred people. Single. And I know people were saying, where did mama get all that many milk? <laughs> wow. The God I serve is a God of honor. How says God, come and collect. You're a woman of valor. And I said, I'll take for my children. Because they are so familiar, they just sit and they wait to be fed. I'll feed them every Sunday. Let me tell you one thing. Whether you take care of the things of God or you don't, my duty as a minister is to minister until I die. Every day and every time that the Lord says stand on the altar and preach, I will preach as though I have no tomorrow. I will bring out the messenger as though I'm dying in the next hour because that is what God called me to do. I will die doing that. It doesn't change me when you don't participate. It doesn't change me when you are not a part of what God has called us to do. It is you that is neutralizing your own blessing. And then you say, Inama Gudara, Gwenda Paija Church, Sidi Sika. Ask yourself, how familiar am I with God's work? How familiar am I with God's calling? How familiar am I with the doings of God? When you answer that question, child of God, she said, don't start making excuses. Sometimes things happen. That doesn't mean it should change you. something before God and it's not right just tell him Lord I repent Father I'm sorry like any father, any mother God is ever willing to bring you back God is ever willing to forgive God's hands are open wide and today they say come my children come back the way I correct my children is not that I don't love them the way I correct you through the word of God does not mean I don't love you. But anybody who has never tells you to depart from a wrong way does not love you truly. Because they expect you to perish in your own way. And them that will love you will tell you They'll tell you I am back Hello Saba. I'm telling you this message. Ruth, may God bless you. God used you mightily. I call you to 
I remember prophesying in your life. I said, I see you walking in my feet. I see you becoming something great. I didn't know you were preaching today. I had to ask Phoebe, is it true? I just said, who, who did you choose as women? And God is going to use you. Because you had the message that God gave me. Except God gave me the words from the, the, the New Testament. But God gave you the word from the Old Testament. And he complimented the two. Hello, somebody. Don't be familiar with God. I want the choir to just come and give us a worship song. The leaders to repent us. God is speaking to us. The healing you have today, the touch you have today, is simply you saying, God, forgive me. Father, forgive me. You know where you've wronged. You've known how far you've dropped spiritually. After fasting, you have gone back 10 steps. After prayers, you have gone back 11 steps. You know how many steps backwards you've taken. Child of God, it's not a time to start feeling guilty. Child of God, it's not a time to start crying. It's a time to say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm putting my priorities straight. I'm realigning myself. I'm putting in what I ought to be putting in. I'm stopping shortchanging your work for my own. I'm coming back fully to operate. Men, don't be too comfortable. You pledged that these microphones will always have batteries. We don't have batteries in them because it's become familiar. Mama will buy. Ali buy. May God supply for me because He always supplies more than I can have. Hallelujah. And because there are no men in this place that will buy batteries, I will buy the batteries. But remember, the blessing is closed over you because you are familiar. Amen. The, close, the, the, the blessing that I release for those that are to buy batteries is neutralized because you simply say, Many of you have pledged, God, I will be buying this, I will be doing this, I will be doing that. You suddenly stop and the blessing is neutralized. No, God, I pledge to be bringing this for the house of God and I will be doing this for God. You suddenly stop, the blessing is neutralized. My Rosambo leader, you are the one to blame. Tell God, whatever I've done to neutralize the blessings over my life because of familiarity, Father, begin to forgive me. Wherever you are, just lift your right hand. Just tell God, wherever, and wherever, whatever I've done to neutralize your blessings over my life, my own doings, my own shortcomings, my own sins, the things that I have done, willingly and willingly, knowingly and knowingly, far. I come back to you. I come back, Father. I come back, Lord. I don't deserve a second chance. Father, I don't deserve for you to bless me again. But I'm asking for mercy. I'm asking you to break me one more time so you can reconstruct me. You are able to reconstruct me because you love me beyond myself. Your word comes for me to be better. I can hear you pray. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are. I'm not going to force you to pray. I'm not going to force you to talk to God. This is a moment of reckoning. It's a moment when you should speak to God. It is a moment when your voice should be speaking to your God. Forgive me for being familiar. That type that I haven't brought in many, many months because I've been familiar. Lord, forgive me. The offerings that I've been giving without praying over them. My Father, forgive me.
watching, it's okay, but 